Businessmen don't seem to prosper. Yeah. See, a lot of people struggling. People don't seem to get promoted. They are Christians. They don't seem to have a certain level of prosperity, success. People who seem to be coming, people who say, I don't lose my job. <laughs> And it's a phenomenon. And you know, if I take my life, if I'm honest with you, I'm very honest with you. Um, if you meet my teachers, you know, my mother went for a funeral uh, recently. And when she went for a funeral, it's a Methodist funeral. I don't know if you heard about the big American And my Methodist chaplain from Hachimoto School was the one uh, guiding people to their seats. My mother told me, very wicked woman. <laughs> very, very wicked. Her name is Reverend Baby. Very wicked woman. I said, very wicked. Very wicked person. And anyway, she said, where's my son Joshua? That's the <laughs> way of speaking. And she said, I hear he's a pastor now. And she said, God can do anything. Wow. <laughs> you know, so if, if I share, if I share with you what I think, and I don't know much, I've only been telling you this speech, by the work I'm doing, I don't know what way you do, you can analyze your life. People don't seem to go for an effect. To give my testimony, I can say that the greatest skill or act, or maybe before we even call it a skill, or act, the greatest thing of value to a successful Christian, successful in every country, is the ability. You know, if I say hear from God, you switch off. If I say hear God's voice, you switch off. So to do what God is saying to you, maybe I should put it that way. Yeah. And you know, before we come to even obedience, like first, let's even say to hear. Then let's even go further back and say to ask for what even God has for you. I, in my pastoral skills, that's why I started by giving my 10 year credits. In my perspective, if I take a crowd like this, I'll see maybe 5%. Let's read the Bible so you don't know. <laughs> now, the Bible says powerfully in Psalm 10, verse 4, any form of help, not really. Psalm 10, verse 4, says, 
Who, who's, who's, oh, you don't know where you know, don't know where you are. From the place it is. Okay, Psalm 10, verse 4. It says, no, 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 the wicked through the flame of his countenance will not seek after God. <laughs> it is my favorite part. God is not in all his thoughts. Are you guys there? You want to go so far from me today? Or I'll be for a long time. So I'll talk and I'll go for a long time. God is not in all his thoughts. This is my greatest discovery amongst believers, Christians, pastors. And I'm talking about unbelievers. When I look at your faces, as I go through, I you know, I, I believe it more. <laughs> when, I look, when, I look, when I look at your faces, I look, I look at some of you, when I look at you, some of you are about to marry, or want to marry, or desire to marry, or are hoping to marry, or, or, or need to, to marry. God is not in your thoughts. It doesn't mean God doesn't come up. Talking about Christians, I've watched boys chasing girls like Dogs with rabies. Wow. God is not in their thoughts. Through the pride of it, it's pride. What cause it pride? I don't need God. I'll decide. I've seen people doing business. Business is running down. God is not in their calculations. I've seen people falling in love. God is not part of their calculations. God, what God has to say is even more. Like, I'm saying, you see, there are levels. Like, would you obey God? That's one. But to first obey God, you have to first hear what He has to say. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Then to hear what He has to say, you have to first ask. Yeah. Like God, do you do you have something for me that you I, and I'm saying that in my experience, I'm looking at you, don't think I'm feeling something. <laughs> yeah, you know, like, there's no live stream anymore. There's no there's no online there's no online and, and, and I don't even know that there's no online audience. You know, so when I look at your faces, that's all all of you and the decisions that you take, all what I can say, wow. God is not part of your thoughts. Wow. Yes. Yeah. God is not in part of your decisions. You know, I can mention top five decisions of my life. None of them have been a speculation. Whoa. If I take if I take the top five, well, top five within the last ten years. <laughs> Let's not go too far you know, for that. Yes, I can tell you. When I finished university, I went to university and I finished ILB and was trying to be called to the bar. And it was, uh, I'm just talking, you know, allow me to just uh, tell you. Yeah. Don't, don't give me pressure. That's right. Now, I, will, I got a scholarship, 50% off, because uh, I finished number three in my class. You get it? Wow. One, first, I was the first. I also was the second, I was paid my class, out of 600 students. Oh. And I graduated with the first class, so they gave me 50% off my scholarship and free accommodation oh. for my studies. Two different uh, people offered that to me to stay in my university. Oh. An easy decision. Oh, yeah. Easy decision. Now, and, and my university was in a particular city of a particular country, wherever I was. You get it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I was trying to decide where to do the bar. Now, for you, it would have been a very simple decision. Yes, it's free. <laughs> that is it. God is not. If I, if I end of this verse tonight, I would have, I would have succeeded in what I'm trying to get through to you before we even go to the chapter. Now, I, I went. I was praying to the Lord. To the Lord, who are you praying? <laughs> <laughs> 12, 12 something, midnight. And I was praying a long time when the sun started rising. I walked to the window of the apartment I was in. And the window, could, you could see the top of the city. Wow. And so I, I, was, I stood by the window as the sun was rising and I heard in my spirit. The only thing I said I heard is a way of speaking. It doesn't mean uh, an angel came into my room and said, my son, my son. <laughs> What that means is that I felt a pressure from the Lord to say, we, we said, go to an immense city. Where should you go to? Now, that place I went to, there was no 50% scholarship. 
And I lived for almost two years on the floor. I never, I never found a place to sleep. So I slept on the floor. My cousin, who are older than you? I said, I have a minister, I sleep on the floor. I hope he's listening. I slept, I slept, I'm telling you. And the apartment is like this. To where the rector is sitting like this. It includes a kitchen, a bed, and a bathroom. You know, I know it's a great impression. I promise you, when you finish sleeping, you pack the bed, the bed goes into the room. That's right. When I left a two bedroom apartment for free. And wow. 50% of scholarship because the Lord told me, wow. go to. Mm. But most of us, <laughs> you get it? She's fine, she's in church, she's free of chance. But then the trust smiled at her before he drove me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm good to go. God is not <laughs> in his thoughts. Are you alone with me? Yeah. Yes. If I think about top decisions I've taken in my life, Yes, I can say for sure. Another time, I went to um, I was at uh, I was working in another city. I was getting money. You know, I let me let me tell you the truth. I used to watch a lot of TV. Okay, have you watched Have you watched um, shows like Suits? Yes. You know Suits? Yeah, 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 yeah. Have you watched shows like? Law and order. Yeah. Have you ever watched yeah. it? Yeah. That that is my life. Like when I wake up in the morning, I had white shirts in my wardrobe. Yeah. I used to wear winter winter colors. You wouldn't know. Yeah. <laughs> so I used to wear winter colors. You wouldn't know. Copper copper color statements. If you if you if you, you wouldn't know. Yeah. Just say you said okay. Now I used to have about fifteen white shirts and then about four suits. Okay, um, and, um, and, and, and and when I wake up in the morning, I, I, I have my quiet time, whatever. Usually, if I have my quiet time, I then sleep again. Very important. So, <laughs> I used to pray from about 3 ish to about 6 ish. And I'll sleep till 8 30 because I lived, I just have to cross the river to go to my workplace. I lived in the middle of the city. But when I wake up, I wear my white shirt, I tie my tie, I wear my suit. And I'll play music, I used to play music, I used to play jazz wow. in the morning. Yeah, and, I, and I'll be brushing my teeth. You know, you know, I used to like singing to myself. I used to do it all over here. So, and I'll wear my tie, you know, I didn't used to wear the suit. I'm like, I'll, I'll go to the suit. Okay. You get it? Yeah. Yeah. Then I'll walk, and there was a little footbridge over the river. So I cross it, but usually when I get to the middle of the bridge, I just look around. No. The river boat is passing. No. Then I look up and I could see my office. My office was on the 25th floor. The building was 46 stories. My bedroom was from 25. And my office was by the corner that looks over the river. So I look at where I could see who has come to work. <laughs> and I walk. It took me 10, 10, 12 minutes max to get to work. Now on my way to work, I stop at Starbucks. And the guy knows me, and I know the guy. <laughs> so the guy, his name was Annie. There were two guys. One guy was Annie, and I was a Sovani. I'm Mr. Malpe. I don't mention such names. But anyway, so Annie, Annie was even say, "Hey, Josh, Josh, you're late." It means he, he knows that I'm late, right? You know. Yeah. Then he, oh, as soon as he sees me, start making my coffee black, two sugars. Right. Then I, then I say, "Thanks, Annie." Then I turn around, I'll pay him my changes with me. Then it's not like I have a very comfortable life. You get it? And as soon as I. I walk downstairs, go through security, I have to go through security every day because the way I was working. And then we go into the lift, and then we're all full. The lift, lift is crammed, we all come to work. And then if you see somebody, you know, you start chit chatting. Oh, yeah, it was the weekend. You know what I, mean? <laughs> I had a very nice life, I don't lie to you. I mean, I would have documented my life. Now, one day my boss called me into his office and told me uh, that one of our Teammates, her name was Kay Dale, was resigning after 40 years of service. Wow. Yes, right. And so they needed somebody to take her position. Now she was a junior manager. I was a manager. I was a junior manager. Get it? There's manager, junior manager, senior manager. Then from there, those people don't have titles. <laughs> All right? Now she was doing that. Time for me to become a junior manager. Now at that time, I felt the Lord telling me that it's time for me to give myself wholly to the ministry. So again, I went to pray. 
and I was praying. This time I was praying around 4 p.m. on Salt Coast Tunnel, a street somewhere. And as I was praying, I heard the Holy Spirit tell me again, go to Ghana, Accra. Yes. And I thought the Holy Spirit tell me that. Now, if I take the decisions that are taken, which don't sound intelligent, I can say that they have led, they have led me. I'm more prosperous than I was when I was at the front. Yes. You are quite liberal. <laughs> I, am, I am more stable. When it was time for me to marry, I went to a place, a farm. I went to a farm okay. in the hinterlands of Europe, alone. I went there from Wednesday to Saturday. Nobody on earth knew where I was. Nobody had died. They would have been able to <laughs> Nobody knew where I was. I was with donkeys and ponies and animals on the farm. And I was praying, let your will be done, God. Show me who to marry. Show me who to marry. You know, and the Lord guided me. So when I look at people taking it, when I was at the farm, let me, let me also say, when I used to work at the farm, one day I, 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 I was at the bank and I was just praying for favor at the bank, not the church group. I was praying for God to favor me at the bank. I prayed specifically for favor. Because the Bible says, Jesus grew wisdom and stature and favor with God and men. So I subtracted the prayer and I said, give me favor with men. You relax on the rest. <laughs> give me favor with men. I prayed and prayed and prayed and prayed and slept. When I slept, I saw a guy called Rob. Say Rob. Rob. Yes, not the queen. But a guy called Rob who used to work next to me. Rob. Uh, he was gay, that's no way to And he felt that I was giving homophobic vibes. I don't know how he knew I was a Christian. But I used to, I, I don't know how, he, he said one of you used to say when he says that there's a vibe. He, he, he didn't know how to think of it. But he said there was a vibe around me. So the Lord showed me the dream. Rob, stealing my coffee. When I tell you, he said to put it down. I saw it very <laughs> So I woke up and I prayed and I said, Lord, whoever is trying to finish me in this point, but I can tell you something. No, have you ever been awake and that? No, something, you don't even know what it is, but something is not right. One week later, Rob was sacked from the bank. He found some irregularity somewhere. I don't even know where it was. If he went. The last time I saw him was on his way to another job interview somewhere else. God is always part of your life. Hallelujah. God must always be in your thoughts. My question to you today is what are you deciding? What do you need? Let God join your thoughts and your calculations. God was with me at work, always. I pray for wisdom. I pray for guidance. I pray for him to show me what to do. No, you say you want God to help you at work, but you are stuck in fornication. Okay. God is not part of your calculations. You know, the song says, I choose to be holy. Okay. Not that they forced me. <laughs> like, I chose, I chose holiness. <laughs> I chose. <laughs> <laughs> no, some of you are being forced to be holy. No, no, you put it here. You are not saying to yourself, I choose to be different. I choose, I take a decision for my life. So that's why, that's why people repent to pastors. Mm. You know, David said something wonderful. Against thee and thee only have I sinned. You are mm. not sinned against the man. Come on. The only person that sinned against the father. Mm. Yeah, who you sinned against the father, beg for him. If somebody's a father in life, you sin against because the prodigal son said, I've sinned against you and against God. His mm -hmm. fathers, you can sin against. That's the But apart from that, telling me there's no repentance. Repentance is before God. I see the church has become used to like, when I say God is not his thoughts, it's very deep. You see, there is like, God is not part of what you are thinking about. Whenever you are you're moving, you've forgotten that there's a God. So as we begin our series on out of here, and I want all of you to know, you know, maybe I should read the verse. Should we do that? So yeah. that but my verse, you know, only works in ESV. So I don't know.
don't know where to do it. For sure, Mr. Fortress is usually because or she used King James. I can also use King James if you post me. Are you guys listening to me or you are very quiet and this your first time back? Is it a message, the atmosphere or what is it? Warming up. Okay. Okay. Are you with me? Yeah. You're not with me, but my iPhone is still with me. Jeremiah. Chapter 29 and verse 11. Now, I'm going to read it for you in ESV. You guys have pens and paper or at least notes somehow. Yeah. Okay. I want to read the verse to you. I want you to write it down. But I'm not going to preach what I was going to preach. Let's just look at this verse in close. Okay. I think it will be enough for you. Are you with me? Yeah. Now, it says everybody write it down. Nobody should be too big. Write down what I'm going to say. Are you ready? From yeah. the For I know, you know, I want you to print this verse. I want to put it in your bedroom. Okay, all of you, I'll send me pictures of it hanging in your bedroom. For I know the plans I have for you. Are you there? Yes. Declares the Lord. Am I going too fast? No. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Are you there? Yes. Comma, comma. Plans for welfare and not for evil. Comma to give you a future and a hope. Did you get that? I'll say it again. Shall I, shall I give it to you again? Yeah. For I know the plans I have for you. Come and declare the Lord. Right? Yes. Come on. Plans for welfare and not for evil. Come on. To give you a future and at home. Are you with me? Yeah. Oh, please, David, are you there? Yes. I'm going to share this verse with you, and then we'll close. And then we'll continue when we find a baby. <laughs> because this is not, I don't think it's working for me. Right? Now, are you there? You don't know. Yeah. Now, there are four important lessons to watch from this verse, which will guide us greatly and help us to have God in our thoughts. No, you see, it's very possible that you are you are totally outside the will of God and perhaps for the last five years you've never been in this world before. Yes. It is possible that you are about to marry the wrong person. Yes. Now I want you to come alive to possibilities. Mm -hmm. It's possible that you've been working on a particular train of disobedience for the last four years and you have three months to switch course or you die. Once uh, I, I was preaching, and the Lord gave me a vision and he told me to say it to the church. And I'll say what it was. And I said that, I, I, I said the vision on a Sunday morning. I said, if hey, the person will die. Mm -hmm. and, and, and the person died. Yes, he passed away. Passed, you know what I mean? Passed. And what <laughs> to kick the bucket. Yes, to kick the bucket. Yes. <laughs> so good. So I'm telling you, I'm, I'm not, some of you feel you are automatically in the world of God. No, you don't even care enough to, to, to ask God what he thinks. It's possible you are even married to the wrong person. Yes. How did you see how much did you get in this You couldn't even get, you couldn't even get. You didn't even get one in BC months. Not secondary school, BC months. I'm just going to So how much more is the calculation that is life? You see, it's very important to know how to hear God's voice and to even value what God has to say. It's very important for every Christian. See, all of you looking at me, you don't understand. You know, that's why Christians are poor. That's the cause of Christian poverty. There's a lot of that. There's a lot of that. I don't just preach, you know. I stopped that a while ago. I don't just preach. I ask God what, what He wants me to say. About Even though there's five to seven and we are giving a line of preaching, and God is always in my thoughts by His grace, by the mercy of God. I try to maintain what does God want for me, what does God have to say. I don't just preach everywhere. I have, in, I have, I have been invited to a number of countries. 
I don't just go everywhere. No, one day I was invited somewhere. And I went to my father's cell. Uh, I was invited to a church, a, a big church, a big church in South Africa. And I went to my father's, my father's, my father was in the kitchen. And I went to tell him that, that you have been invited to so and so and so. I thought you say, wow, <laughs> really? How do you know them? How do they know you? Wow, I thought you say something wrong. Oh, you want to remember I was taking a man and he turned on the head and said, okay. So are you going? I said, oh, I came to discuss with you to see. And he just said three words, plans, purposes, and pursuits. <laughs> so I didn't understand. <laughs> when you can understand, you know what you do. No. You Google. Every time you don't understand, you Google. Yes, yeah. yeah. so that you don't look stupid. <laughs> if someone can say something I'm supposed to know, maybe you know. So you just Google very quickly and then. So I went to Google and found out it was a book by Kenneth David. Oh. That book, I've never read the book before. I read only chapter one and I stood there <laughs> So I bought the book and I read. And the first verse, and. Um, they uh, accept the wrong the house. They labor your name that building. He said a lot of things are being done with the wrong purpose and the wrong pursuit. Mm. And until something is the will of God, pastor, do not go. Think of that one. <laughs> and you realize that like, you, not every invitation is the will of God. Uh. Not every connection is the will of God. We actually live as if everything is okay. And what you don't realize is that your disobedience, you see, listen carefully, your disobedience to God is the reason for your sadness. Mm-hmm. Isaiah 48 verse 18, oh, that thou wouldest have hearkened to my commandments. Then your peace would have been like a river, and your righteousness like the waves of the sea. Your life would have been like a river, just flowing. What makes a river flow? Who provides water for a river? Peace, look at you. You live your whole life in disobedience. 95% of Christians are in 90% of disobedience. 95%. Look at all of you looking at me. Secret sexual relationships, lies, lives of deception, thieves, stealing money at work, disobedience, stop on. Look at us. And we expect to prosper. Oh, you should have listened to me. You thought when you listen to God, it takes you down. Never. God only takes you up. God only takes you up. God's elevator only goes up, doesn't go down. Listening to God only makes you better. I'm telling you, listening to God only makes you richer. Fornication is an adultery and drug abuse are directly connected to prosperity. Directly like a line. You can map it. Yes, I can show you. I can show you. It's directly. I can explain it's very easy. You see? You're only 21, it's never seven. Mm. Relax. <laughs> now, you hope to marry at 27. You told him you're a virgin. <laughs> so, you know, <laughs> you're born again, you're not born. So on the night, on the night, you try to act like you're a pain. I'll let you see what <laughs> You're more open than the motorway at midnight. And then, <laughs> and then now, allow me, I've known people who are so And then now, now you're married. But, but, can an Ethiopian change his skin? Can a leopard clean his spots? So are you who are accustomed to doing evil, able to do good. So now you don't know how to stay with one girl because you never stayed out, you never stay with no girl. So now you marry. You know, you're married at 29. One brother told me, I was at his wedding, big wedding in Akari, I mentioned his name, big wedding. <laughs> He told me that he says, Pastor, pray for me. Going to my friend from school. What? He said, Pastor, pray for me. I'm praying for the grace to be able to stay for two years. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yes. <laughs> and, and, and God did not grant that request. He didn't receive that grace. Yes. So now you are 30, 31, 32, 34. Your wife has caught you down. Now it's a broken room. Now your wife doesn't like you. She doesn't trust you. So she also becomes insecure and feel the spirit of fear. You've opened the door to the spirit of fear into your home. So now she's afraid. She's checking your phone. She's checking this. So you still don't like her anymore. So she pushes you more back to the Ethiopian skin. Remember? You see, your phone says, can an Ethiopian change his skin? Means that my pastor found fast and become my color. That's what the person that you want to ask. Yes. Like pastor found fast and become my color. Or can they never change the spot? That's Imagine, you know those dogs, the Emirate dogs, some are brown and white. Can you wash it down and it becomes white? Can you? If not, then those who are accustomed to evil, when evil becomes your custom, how can you ever learn to do good? 
That's why Paul said, laying aside every sin and, and, the, and the, the, every weight and the sin which God so easily beset us. There are some sins which easily, in your life, there are some easy sins. It's better for that sin to be that, like you use too much Colgate. Or... <laughs> you know, I'm not saying you don't press the bottom. You don't press it. It's better. It's better. Or you sleep a lot. Or you eat a lot. Better. That, that, that you have some lies. The sin which is you know there's some sin small you call it. The Bible talks about it, the propensity of to sin. Which what is what sin is your propensity? You've taught yourself. You thought you are doing somebody. You've done yourself. So now what happens? Now you have a broken home, your wife has sent you from the house. And the new girl, you want to show someone's a child. And then the girl after that, because you cannot learn how to stay. So you jump, then you have three. Then you got engagement for two. That's how it happens, friends. That's how it happens. That's how you, your home ended up the way your home, your home is now. That's how it happens. Then what happens next? You don't like my preaching. Go to another church. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> then after that, then after that, now your children all hate you. They hate their father. That means they are all cursed. Oh, it will not be well with them if they don't live on the earth. They go to secondary school. Don't you remember you people in secondary school? You can't see your father. Mm. Your father is a fool. You don't let those people. Yeah. Oh, when we are about to, your father is a fool. You don't know you are bringing cases for yourself. But for me, they are a fool. They like who they are. For me, they are a fool. You may as well have best cases to be on your Come on. You think you are smart the word of God? My goodness, where has Jonah? Where has Jonah? The word of God followed him into a way. Wow. Where has Jonah? You can't change your ability to hear from God and to obey him. And the Bible says, and his commandments are not grievous. Oh, that you would have listened to my command. I told you. I told you he was a good guy, but you, you, you stand on him and walk on him. You will see. Your peace would have been like the river. But now you'll be on child three. You will be begging you guys now. But there you are. Every day looking at wedding dresses. Yes. Oh, that you would have listened. All of you watching me, I'm telling you, you'd have been more prosperous than you were. He told you to tell the truth. Um, you were in the meeting, he told you to speak up and tell the truth. The Holy Spirit was whispering into your heart. Hey, you don't value those things. Then you are a businessman, we don't bring those things there. That's for change. Okay. Mm-hmm. So you are a deceptive person at work. You are a liar. My goodness, the case of the Lord, there are cases. No, there are cases. There's the case of Moses, there's the case of Paul, there's the case of Ham. Um, um, no, no, not the case of Ham. Um. Moses spoke a case. Yeah. Abraham cursed. Uh, Noah himself spoke a case. Me, I've cursed one person in my life. I was going for eight hours. It was Sunday morning. And I I, 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 I put it on my chest right that morning. And I cursed that guy. I cursed him like a wind. So come, you know, I don't have any problems with this. I don't have any problems with this. I have any problems with this. Honestly, I, 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 don't, I, don't, I, don't, I don't judge. You don't judge. Let's not be judged. I mean, I have very wild feelings. You know, as a priest, I accept it. I accept it, you know. But, but, but when you come between me and my sheep, I bring in a problem. You tell my sheep, you shouldn't tell me. They should stay away from me. They shouldn't trust me. When did you meet them? You get to meet them in my church, my floor. Don't know. That's where things start to get from. And I cast him after eight hours of prayer. I cast him. I stood in the middle of my study, my prayer room. And I cast him. <laughs> when I see him, I say, I wish I did. I wish I did. I don't cast him. I don't believe in cast him. I don't believe in cast him. But sometimes the Holy Spirit comes to me to care. Jesus Christ cast him. He said many cases. Many, not once. And not all times he cast he said, more to the, the world because of offenses. He said, a, a curse across the world. The new one who goes to offend these little ones. Hang, he said, hang a, a millstone. And j- throw, jump yourself, jump yourself. <laughs> throw yourself into the sea. Yeah, I'm imagining how to protect this. <laughs> 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 yeah, now, where was that? <laughs> now, but the curse of the Lord. God in heaven has spoken the Bible says in the house of the thief. Not on the thief, his home. The Bible says it enters into the timbers. The phone work, the roofing. There's the cats eating away at the house. You don't believe in those things. You're funny. Truth is a key to prosperity. Hallelujah. Oh, that that would have happened. 
You should have listened to God. And right now, God is speaking to you. God is always speaking. Paul said, the Spirit speaks expressly. God is always speaking to your heart. God is telling you, at work, you are stealing money. How can you prosper? The ability to hear from one another. Look, I'm not talking about a commandment that you wrote in the house and not steal. I'm saying the time you were stealing the money spoke to your heart. He says, stop. You should have listened. Your peace would have been like a river. Your peace would have been like a river. But your life is like a ramble. You know Rambo? It's never eating. Have you ever seen Rambo like fucking nice? It's never eating. It's never at peace. That's your life. What was the last time you slept well? Mm. Why is that when they say you have a meeting with your face right now? What are you afraid of? 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 Is that a church, a pastor, and you can't do that? You guys, listen, don't we'll spoil your lives. Yeah. The ability to hear, that's what I said, there are different ways God speaks to you. You see, that's why Satan always discredits pastors. Because one of the ways God speaks is through a pastor. Mm-hmm. I've spoken by the prophet. But what I'm saying is, you don't usually even hear what God has to say because you are not even looking for what he has to say. Do you know we have deviated from our verse? Jeremiah 29 and 11. Yes. You've written it down, isn't it? Yeah. Now, there are four lessons. If you get these four lessons, go close. This is the introduction to my series. Yeah, allow me. Number one, number one, there is a plan. There is a plan for your life. Wow. That's point one. Wow. There is a plan. God has a plan. Most Christians are not aware of the fact that God has a girl for Derek to marry. Wow. Oh, God. Derek is so busy choosing his beloved, not knowing that there is a plan. Christ kid is not aware that there is a job God has for him. You see, one day I was was involved in construction and we were building the best country concrete. So let's hurry up. We'll solve the other things later. So they need to put pipes here, they need to put that we'll solve everything later. So we just catch it, we'll do those things later. When we finished, they brought me the bill for chiseling to put the pipes inside. <laughs> that bill was about one fourth of the whole construction of the house. Yes. Yeah, because we involved in the construction. So now the team who were involved in that work, that work is still standing. The team, nobody likes to think about it. But they are built to add on. Yeah? The same team, we were involved in another project. So we started the edifice. When we started, a plumber was there and I said, Look, let's. There is a plan. There is, there is a plan. We brought a big edifice. We right. put the eight sheet on top of my phone and said, let us follow the plan. Because mm-hmm. last time, we said there's no plan. So we, so some of you have relationships that you're always chiseling. You are married, but you have to chisel to add a plan. Something small, you are fixing something in your life. Because you didn't build with the plan. Mm-hmm. God says, I have a plan for you. Yeah. I have a plan. There's something written. I have a plan for your life. Mm-hmm. There's no part of your life God is not involved with. So now, cast your mind back to the last 15 years of your life. (laughs) (laughs) Cast your mind back. Cast your mind back. And ask yourself, have you been in the plan of God? Just cast your mind back. No. Shouldn't have proposed. You do. But you are acting with your spirit. Your own spirit. Are you a fool? (laughs) (laughs) Shouldn't have broken up. You shouldn't have you made a mistake. You should not have. You know the motto when you join, you have to go. You have to have three chances to turn off. You have only three. The first one is to airport, to Milan The second one is to Akramo. The third one is to Paris. After that, you, you will go. This is not for you. You will go to Turmoil. It's not going. It's not going. You will go. You will be a sudden fight in him just now. Then you people don't see it as something coming to reduce you out. Okay, you see, most Christians are not aware of the fact that there is a plan. 
as you are choosing, there's a plan. Judah, as you are making your decision, there's a plan. You are not interested. God is going your course. First, you must say, God, before, it doesn't say that there are times of, sometimes God directs your path. You go into all of that. Sometimes God speaks to your past. Sometimes he speaks to your conscience. Sometimes he speaks to the way. Sometimes he speaks, he speaks to you through preaching. And different ways God. But first, is like my mom said, I will watch to see what you say to me. Mm-hmm. Is there anything God is saying to me? But most of us, we, we read our Bibles, listen to preaching, we come to church, but we're not even looking for what God has to even say. I'm not preaching online. I'm preaching to you people who sit in the of me. I'm talking to all of you. God has a plan, number one. Number two, only God knows that plan. Mm-hmm. You see, like, I don't know it. Mm-hmm. No, if I knew the plan, I'll call all of us. We'll not be happy. I'll be happy to hear your plan. <laughs> your plan. I don't know the plan. A lot of people make this mistake. Let me ask the pastor what I should do. Whatever you say, I'll do. Never ask the pastor what you should do until you pray. Yes, sir. She wanted it. Wanted to know the plan. She didn't have a child. And her other wife, Pedinaya, the man had two wives. He told this, God was still moving. <laughs> so the man had two wives. And uh, he was balancing the two. But one couldn't have a child. So Hannah went to pray to God. I would say she went to the altar to pray until he left her womb, but there was no sound. God didn't answer her prayer. The pastor from the pulpit, he said, go home, your prayer has been answered. You can't have the word from the pastor until you pray. Many times, when God is going to speak to you through a man of God, it's because you are seeking his voice, and you are asking a question, then you hear the answer to the question. But you can't just sit there and say, the pastor, is the pastor God? If I was God, first of all, I was God. So, <laughs> Yes, you've not paid time that you couldn't bring it. 
Because you are not paying me a little. I have paid time. That had to be in bits. That's right. That's right. I should pay slowly. Precipitate. I've paid time for that. I took the whole offering back. Like, this rule, you can't join me. I need a bank. That's right. Look at you. 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 What do you want? What do you want? What do you want? So for what I need. And look outside, only for real cars. Job. You, 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 what has God told you that you've not done? 
You were at work, he told you that you have to take a break and come and pray for three days. You didn't go. That little interaction, your life would have changed. She was texting you, he told you no. Oh, no! Goodness. You heard it in your heart. No! No, no, my son. No, 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 no. You heard it. You heard it. He told you. Oh, he didn't tell you. Come, come, he didn't tell you. He told you. <laughs> the plan is a plan of welfare. That's that's my you know me, I'm a smart thing of God than you. Me, I've seen what God can do. God, I was afraid to commit my life to God. I can't let I was very afraid. What would he do with me? When I when I when, when I decided to come, because I was crying. You know what happened to me? You know, you know, when you go for cramps, people raise their hands, they run out, you know, it's all in experience. I want to go, I want to go, I want to go. When I, when I decided to serve the Lord, I was on the road time at 4 a.m. and wept. Okay, I said, okay, 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 okay. That, was, that was my experience. It is a great thing to serve the Lord, but it is not an easy thing to serve the Lord. I can promise you. But I've discovered to my shock plans of welfare. Plans of welfare. Following God. Sometimes I've been invited to great ministries, great churches, great four speakers. The three plus me, when I see the three, I say, wow. <laughs> yes, this, there will be money involved with this. <laughs> because you know for these players, you don't have money. <laughs> yes. And I've said no. I've been invited to places you can't imagine. I've been offered money you can't imagine. I've said no. I've learned it. The more I follow him, the more my life works out, the more I obey him. The wife he has for me is a wife of welfare, not of evil. The one God has for you think you know sex. You see? will be there. Am I going over time? No. It's my first, you know, I love you guys. Listen. Listen. To sit down and imagine that. This human being, let's put a stick in front of him. And this one, let's put a hole. You have to get the angle right. Then let them come together and put inside. Okay. And then they'll be happy. <laughs> <laughs> Who had that thought? <laughs> Is it you? <laughs> Who made it? Like, who, who sat down and said, oh, I'll make something nice? <laughs> Many of you think that if God chooses for you, your sex life will be bad. No, I want to be honest with you. No, no, you feel that if God chooses for you, my sex life will be poor. Choose for yourself, you see. <laughs> you experience it. You know, one day, I went to a hotel and I was wandering around. I wasn't supposed to be there. In another country. And then I entered a door as big as this, the whole front seat. And I opened it to school. It was a fridge. When I walked inside, it closed. They closed the fridge door. They shut Close the fridge door. You didn't say anything. <laughs> For about five minutes. <laughs> Father, thank you. <laughs> Don't ask. <laughs> you have to take my spirit. My time was cut. I was crying. Crying on the door. I didn't. I just went back. Then I heard the door open. I went to the door. The door opened. They shut and the window. All. Oh. <laughs> you were laughing at me. In that cold atmosphere. That's how you're married to me. Oh. 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 Yes. 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 I'm more interested in telling you the truth about yourself. If you can start to hear, he's speaking now as I'm just speaking to you now. He's always talking. Some of you have never even given a couple of 1,000 cities ever in your life. How do you plan to break forward? Me, offerings is one of it. Yeah, four areas that God speaks to you. One is offerings. Hey, God, you can ask for things. <laughs> God, no. We should be asking for something. Say, no, that's what we should ask. I'll do it for you. I'll do it. You don't have to do it before I'll do it. So I'll do it, I'll do it. I will do it. You tell me, I'll do it. 
you can't tie them at 1,000 cities. The 100 cities you can. You think it's a plan of evil. God wants to reduce my, my salary. Your salary. The national service is 550. <laughs> it's not a salary. It's an allowance. <laughs> 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 Finally, what are many points of agreement? Three. Final point. To give you a future and a hope. Without the plan of God, there is no future and there is no hope for your life. There is no future outside the will of God. There is no future outside the will of God. There is no hope for you outside the will of God. Look, if you never hear me preach again, this is your last day just to you remember this. There is no hope and there is no future outside the world. Being led, the greatest thing ever. You know, one day, it was in a meeting. And the pastor was talking. And somebody kept on adding. You know, I mean, I've never before. And your mother is saying that she'll tell you the room. They were sitting there and it was. Yes, and even the kids were like, sure. You think it's my mother, you know? That's the feeling I had. That's the feeling I had. And at that point, I decided to sort everybody out. My pastor, the person talking, the whole room. So I stood up and said, I've had enough. I said, and the whole room just went silent. Hey, come to this. So I apologize. <laughs> 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 I think I know what I'm doing. I stood up and said, I am mad enough. Don't finish. Don't finish your life. It's about to sort the past out. <laughs> I apologize. I said, actually, we're trying to do it. Hold So today, so today, I'm telling you, I don't know why. I've had enough. Honestly, I've had enough. Apologize. Uh, I just like to uh, ability to hear. When I dropped my wife at home, you know what? The first I met my wife, I, I, I went to drop her at home with my friend Pastor Terry. I was silent in the car. Pastor Terry is beloved, and then my wife. So Pastor Terry was going to drop his beloved at Kolebu. So he said I should drive him. I had a car, he didn't have a car then. We were younger. So I, I was driving. And then they brought this, these two girls who also live in Kodibu, and one of them was my wife. So I was driving. They were all chatting the car, and I was praying. He said, This is Lord, this is confirm it. Mm. And even analyze him. I've never analyzed my wife. What size is she? What? <laughs> you see, you've not had some bad experience before. <laughs> <laughs> and you have those things are irrelevant. Look, like, what are those things that people are doing? So that you learn about the family that very long. I was trying to I didn't feel the Lord was saying yes. I didn't even, even the flow of conversation. When I got to text me, I'm just checking if you're home. No, it's not. I wasn't sure. So. The next week or so, it was a Sunday night, and my text went back from Belgium, happened to be in Ghana. And I told her that there's no way to get was our one year. See outside CC. So there's no way here to get water. I need water to drink. I was testing my time. And my children were going to tell, was standing with my wife. I, I don't know how they were friends, but they were friends. I don't even know how they are friends, but they tell me how they knew each other. And and my wife called a taxi and put me in the back seat. I was just I, I imagine me, I sat in the back seat. <laughs> I was even confused by myself. I said, let me see. She said, in the taxi, you're going to find me water. And she drove me to night market, you know what that is. Everywhere was closed. And she drove me to Owando. Yeah, wow. We went inside Pentagon. She parked in Pentagon and she got out and walked to Owando. And there was no water to scream back. And she took me to Ivandi. Wow. There was no water. Then she said that sometimes there's a shop at the back of Commonwealth yeah. that will be open. So she drove me to the back of Commonwealth. There was nothing there. And we came back. She said she never gave me water. By the time we parked, oh. this is it. Oh. Yes. I never even looked at her face well. <laughs> I never even been able to see it. I was in the night. You see, I don't know. <laughs> Dear people, you don't know. You don't value God's voice. You don't value God's voice. The mm-hmm. Bible says in Ephesians chapter 3, the word of God was scarce in those days. Open vision. There was no open vision. God was scarce. 
It's not easy to hear from God, though. It's not easy to let God tell you something. Sometimes you have to let God to tell you, say this. Don't join this group. You were at church, and your pastor said, whenever they are criticizing the boss, don't join that group. But you can't help yourself. Yes, I don't, I, mean, I don't like those things at all. Even the way he talks, and everybody in the office knows. And that one there, it's not right. Some things are not, it's not right. It's not right. You are in your office. I don't like that. You know, I'm being recorded. I'm being recorded. That's why you're where you are. You don't hear his voice. You're not sensitive. You're not even looking for what he has to say. And so that's where you are. God will provide you everything you need. God will give you the best of everything. God will give you the greatest of everything. You know, even me, in my position, when I watched something, I said, it's going to, it's going to crash. I just watched it. You know, this car is going to smash into the wall and finish. I'll just be watching and accepting it. Yes, even me, in my position, how much more God? God sits in every watching up, taking decisions. When I think I'm going to do my master's, I'm going to do my master's, I'm going to do my master's as I come again. After that, I'm going to do my PhD in Sweden and I'll come back. When I come back, I want to work for an NGO. <laughs> My wife's auntie runs an NGO. She said that when I come back, I should come and see her my CV. <laughs> and I'm like, I'll forget my CV. So I've been in a little bit ahead. So me, yeah, that's my, my move, my career plan. Your career plan? <laughs> Your career plan? That's a friend. What kind of Christians are we? Your career plan. Wow, oh, what is he saying to you now? That's the next plan. That's your career plan. You know, Bishop Titi of Fire, I was in the office of you. He studied in Norway or some Germany, he studied in Germany. And when he finished, he did his PhD, some crazy education, I forgot to master's with you, right? And he came back to Canada. He said, then he got a job to pastor a church in Germany. They offered him a job, a white church, to come and pastor a church in Germany. So he bought it. And the Lord told him, no, you must be here. He said, you didn't have to do one thing. So he said, he had gone to marry this girl. Why? I think when he was in Germany or so now, and the girl was also pregnant. So he moved them into an uncompleted building at Spintex. As squatters. Talk about Bishop Titi of Tino. Because we live there as squatters. Because God said, every night he said, God said that the land is for me, but I couldn't see it. Mm. God said the land because the Bible says you have need of patience after you have done the will of God. The will of God needs patience, needs patience after. And let patience have the perfect way. So he said he went to remove 10 meters of Cooper Colonel Roundabout to on the run for the end of the He said you walk up and down about 10 times the whole length of the That is wherever the source of for years or she said today that I'm completed I own it. That's right. I own that house. I own the whole area. I stood with him in his office and he showed me. I just not broken the house. I own this house. I own it. I own it. I own it for our ministry. All of this. Just slowly, I didn't even see how. He said, I went, God told me that this is our church. No, I've noticed. People who do well in life, people do well in ministry, people do you always hear them say, and the Lord spoke to me. And the Lord said I should do. You know, one day my father took me for a dinner in, in, in Korea. Only big church pastors at the dinner. Honestly, I've, I've rarely seen a gathering like that. Honestly, I must tell you, I was very silent. At one of the places I was, my gift of the gathering was cut short. I was sitting down quiet and pastors. Then they bring pastors to give testimonies. Pastor, one pastor came and said, You know, we had a joint service in our city. It was chili or something. I chili. So we had a joint service in the city, but when we all come together, there was no space, so we decided to rent four stadiums. <laughs> and so I had to go from by helicopter from stadium to stadium oh, wow. and all of them. Then they'll sit down, they'll be also bringing me to this district. <laughs> and a white, white man, South Africa. He got up, said, he has a picture to show that one of the biggest ministries. He stood up and said, we, we, we went to San Antonio in a and where is that in America? Which is Texas. Texas. One is San Antonio, Texas. And uh, we started a church about a year and a half ago. And we have 3,000 people coming to church every Sunday. And after just a year and a half, we bought the building, cash, no debt, in the middle of the city for millions of people. And God is really and 
listeners. And so I was, I was telling the story, I said, are we called? Like, <laughs> has God, has God, no, no, I questioned myself, has God like, summoned me? But I have been at it for two years. <laughs> not the same. And apart from the church in Jobeco, we went to San Antonio here and there. Then he said, I had a dream and I saw San Antonio. Oh, no, I don't know where the people come from. I have not been there before. So I flew there and I just rented a hall and I just started preaching. And I just started going. So you will learn that the secret is not in the gate. The secret is always in the obedience. So I don't know what your plans are. The Bible says, we have many plans and the council of what have to some of you are saying you want to marry, you want to foster, you want to break out, you want to, a lot of things. God also has his plan. And only he knows it. So I want to encourage all of you, you know, in this season, as we end the lost one and we end all this corona halloween. Find time to ask God what is his plan. Because as I said, I spoke you have not asked before. <laughs> or have not asked for 10 years. Or don't even know what I'm talking about. <laughs> and so I encourage you. As you continue to hear, God said, God said, my father told me in 1992 or 93, I forget, he was in Switzerland. He started a church in uh, Geneva, started a church in Zurich, and I think started a church in somewhere. And the church was beginning to really work in Switzerland and was growing. And he just said, go and start a church in London. And I just went there, churches there, big ministries, me to start the church. Why? So I just said, I let it go. And he was walking on the street. They started a church in the city room with six people. Today, probably the largest charismatic church in the whole country. The key is not in the gate, it is in the ability to hear and to obey God. So I pray for all of you as we close that He will help you to find it. You know, before we pray, listen. As I speak to you now, God is talking to many of you about things you have to do. God is talking to you. My advice, you know, the Bible doesn't say that the road or the path of the righteous is ordained by the Lord. He says the steps. So God leads in steps. He doesn't give a full plan, he only gives the next step. Whatever He tells you to do, try to, try to be conscious that that is what is good for you, not what you think or how you feel. God's plan. I mean, that is the, that is, if my life is anything good, that's the secret of my life. It's just I, what he says I should do, that's what I want to do. I'm not in a hurry to be anything like that one. That's the secret of prosperity, the secret of blessing. So I'm going to teach you how to hear from God. How does God speak? How to know when God is talking to you? How to be aware of what God is saying? And so hopefully when we find a venue, we'll continue with that. And I believe it's going to be a big key to you moving forward and walking in God's blessing. Amen. So you are blessed. Bow your heads, let's pray. Father, thank you for your people. I thank you for your